completing a Stuart triple expansion engine part 7, modifying the eccentric sheave of the valve gear for the low pressure cylinder, removing the intermediate valve gear and a surprise ending. The eccentric sheave modification on the low pressure cylinder is exactly the same as the one I've already shown on the high pressure cylinder, so I'll just skip through this bit. Although maybe I'll put it at normal speed for this part because it's very important not to shear off the tap when you're threading the hole in the sheave. As you can see I'm backing off the tap periodically to clear any chips that may be stuck in the flutes. These sheaves are made from cast iron and it threads really well. Steel though can be a bit more tenacious. After brushing away the swarf all that's left to do now is to fit the allen head grub screw and I found one of these in my box of small grub screws and allen keys to fit the small grub screws. I found a suitable grub screw, fitted it and now it's time to reassemble the valve gear. I know the position of the slide valve is fine in the cylinder so I can go ahead and fit the nut to the other side of the bolt that holds it all together. The next job is to accurately set the valve timing on the low pressure cylinder. And this is done in exactly the same way as I showed when I fitted the high pressure cylinder's valve gear. The eccentric sheaves on this engine are made as pairs and on the high pressure cylinder they have a 30 degree offset and on the intermediate and low pressure cylinder a 15 degree offset. And what's this? Can it be beginner's luck? Because the engine started immediately and ran quite well. But not in reverse. When eccentric sheaves are not at 180 degrees to each other with offset built in I find it a bit more fiddly to set the valve gear. That's why it's running better in one direction than the other. And it's more difficult now because the air supply is going into the high pressure cylinder. What I should really do is set the low pressure cylinder with its own air supply. But I'm somewhere near, so just by moving the sheave a very minute amount, I should eventually arrive at the correct setting. This one is quite close, but I think I can get it better than this. And after another minor tweak, it's running better all the time. You do need a fair bit of patience for this job, but I do find that it's worth it in the end. Now the engine is running more or less the same in both directions. And not only can I hear that, I can see the waveforms in my video editor. It still seems to run marginally better in one direction than the other. There's something amiss though, I can hear that it doesn't sound exactly the same as the other triple expansion engine that I have. I wonder how much power it's got. It's currently running on about £40 per square inch and when I put my finger on the flywheel, yes, there's plenty of power. And now, after one final minute adjustment... The engine runs exactly the same way in both directions, with exactly the same amount of power, according to my finger on the flywheel. And when I reverse the valve gear, as you can see, it sounds the same. After fighting the urge to sit and watch the engine working for a while, I thought, no, I will move on to the middle cylinder. After I packed the stuffing gland on the valve rod for the middle cylinder, I ran into a problem. The engine was difficult to turn over, and the two eccentrics on the crankshaft immediately worked loose, so something is wrong here. I was wondering how the centre eccentric sheaves fitted to the crankshaft, and the only way to find this out is to remove the valve gear entirely, which is what I'm doing here, and I thought at this time it would be a good idea to remove the long reversing rod. I gently tapped it out of the way with a small screwdriver. Here's the valve gear for the middle cylinder, and at this stage I replaced the eccentric strap. I put the securing bolts back in, and I will mark this with a centre punch like I did with the other two. The workmanship on this engine is starting to go downhill, I noticed, only in a slight way. For instance, this is the gland cover from the middle steam chest. When I'd removed the gland packing that I fitted previously, I did notice that the valve rod was still a tight fit in the gland, and it was also a tight fit on the studs. After I slightly enlarged the holes in this fitting, it worked perfectly. Time to start the strip down for real. I'm removing the valve gear from the low pressure cylinder and the high pressure cylinder, but before I did that, I made a slight mark on the crankshaft for re-timing purposes, and I also marked the inside of the eccentric sheave of the high pressure cylinder's valve gear with the word high. Then I refitted the flywheel. 
I'd just like to mention my logic and the running order for the way I'm repairing and rebuilding this engine. Before starting to dismantle the engine completely, I wanted to see how good it was and whether it ran or not. On a complex engine like this one, I'm working on a points system, and if the bad points were to outnumber the good points, I wouldn't continue the job. But that's not the case with this engine. When I work on these things, I soon get into the mindset of the builder, and I can see that at this stage, the builder was running out of patience. I'm not a machinist, and I freely admit this, but I'm quite a good fitter. I can make things go. A while back, I was given a large triple expansion engine to work on, built by some famous engineer. I think it had been in the glass case at Cambridge University for many years. But unfortunately, the bad points of this engine outweighed the good points, so I did not continue the series. But that's not going to happen with this engine, because I like it a lot. I don't like these very small 7BA bolts that hold the two halves of the eccentric sheaves together. The first thing I don't like about them is they are 7BA, very small bolts. And the slotted heads are very fine. I'm going to change these for something stronger. I don't quite know what yet, but I'll give it some thought. I really wouldn't want to build one of these engines. I mean, look at this for a piece of engineering. The split eccentric sheave, complete with its slight blowholes, which really will be quite useful, as it will tell me which way to reposition the eccentric sheave so that the offset is the same as the other two. But before I refit them, I would compare them with the eccentric sheaves of the low pressure and the high pressure cylinder to make sure I get them the right way around when I refit them. I want to see what's going on inside this centre cylinder. I'm starting by removing the piping. Before I refit this piping, I'm going to look at a slight modification and the possibility of fitting a simpling valve. What is a simpling valve? It's a valve that you open which lets steam to the low and high pressure cylinders. That way the engine is self-starting. The valve may even have to supply steam to the middle cylinder as well. I don't know about this yet. If, for instance, I fit this engine with a radio-controlled simpling valve and modify the reversing system so it can be operated by a servo, this engine with a suitable boiler, which I have, could be fitted into a large model boat. Here I'm removing the connecting rod, and now the high-pressure cylinder and the valve chest for the intermediate cylinder are detachable. I've removed one too many mounting nuts, but I don't think that's a big issue. The only thing holding these parts together now are four slot-headed bolt screws. And I don't like this very much either. I would much prefer high tensile Allen cap head bolts. More about that as the engine goes back together later on in the series. I don't think very small machine screws like this are really good for this job. I would think they need to be more high tensile. And now, at last, I can remove the front part of the engine. Very interesting. There's something slightly wrong. Where is the slide valve? I would think that this is as far as the builder got. If I look at the port face, I can't see any evidence of a slide valve ever having been fitted. At this point, I'm wondering if this was intentional, because things were going wrong for the builder, maybe, I don't know. And I'm even wondering whether there's a piston or not in this cylinder. By blocking the inlet ports alternately using my finger and rotating the crankshaft, this confirms that yes, there's definitely a piston in there. I phoned Stuart Models and ordered a slide valve casting. And to finish this episode, have a look at this. This is from a friend of mine called Chris Lockwood, who has a company called 21st Century Steam. A while back, he bought a full set of Stuart triple expansion engine castings via eBay. With the castings were even the drain cocks and everything required to build an engine. Here's the invoice from 1971. We'd only just gone over to decimal currency at this point. Look at the date. But better still, look at the complete price at the bottom. £31.38. pence, And that's for the complete set. But on the bottom left-hand side, it says £31.26 received with thanks. Was it that the accounts department hadn't quite got used to the decimalisation at this point? I don't know. That's it for this one. Stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.